I'm actually standing in the empty sanctuary of Christ Church's West Campus in Rockaway, New Jersey. We also have an East Campus in Montclair, New Jersey. It's empty now, but on a Sunday morning when it's filled and I look out into the sea of the congregation, there are over 40 different nationalities that call Christ Church their home. And so I've had the awesome opportunity to be able to talk to whites, blacks, Asians, Hispanics, Native Americans, as well as East Indians with the whole idea of race and racial conversations. Welcome to Moments That Impact. I'm Dr. David Ireland. Our nation is having a conversation right now on the topic of race once again. This time it's over the untimely death of Trayvon Martin based on an assumption by Bob Zimmerman that Martin was up to no good. And we know he was wrong. But how do we help everyone in the country get on the same page to understand the cry of the African-American community. I've learned one thing when you deal with pastoring a diverse congregation. You can never guilt people into change. Guilting people never lasts. They may have a spike of a behavior that shows soberness or an awareness, but it never lasts because it was never in their hearts. Have you heard of the phrase white guilt? This is exactly what goes on sometimes when you find social activists, they would push an issue. An issue is a very legitimate issue, a very righteous issue. But sometimes the motivation or the style, the methodology of pushing it, it makes white people guilty, feel guilty, and they are guilted into change. It was never in their hearts. And how do you, how do you undo that? Because once justice has been exacted for Trayvon, and the nation goes on to a different conversation. How do we make sure at the end of the day we didn't create a greater divide between whites, blacks, Asians, Native Americans, and all the other races that comprise our national shore? The only way is that we don't leave a bitter taste in people's mouth with guilt. One way to undo white guilt is to be able to challenge white people to demonstrate their compassion. See, you remember when you were children, when someone would grab a kid's arm, one kid grabbed the other kid's arm and twist it. And when that kid whose arm is being bent cries out, uncle, uncle, which means I give up, the kid who's twisting his arm quits. You know what'll happen? Lots of people stop playing the race card. When a white person and those who are in power, those who are elected and those who represent us, those who are in places of influence, would be able to articulate their compassion for people that are in crisis. So when compassion is articulated for people like Trayvon and for the African-American community, when the tri crisis occurs, then the white guilt card won't be played by social activists. And so I want you to continue this conversation in your own circle so that we can be able to learn how to not use white guilt as a point of leverage, rather challenge people everybody to use compassion. Feel what I feel, sense what I sense. When there's an injustice for one, let it be an injustice for all. And when one is weeping, let's all weep. And when we do that, white guilt will be erased and the nation will come into a place of greater wholesomeness. This has been a moment that impacts.